All right, Brian. Uh, big game uh, coming up after a huge win uh, against Austin. Just wanted to get your take after you've taken it all in. You looked look at the video. What we decided after we saw the video and reviewed it was that the team played better. I think, you know, the game against Houston was a good outing. It was good because we won, but there were some flaws. You know, the question before the game that I think the kids answered was, okay, let's see what Danny and Josh have against a better team. I think they answered that pretty darn well. But overall, as a group, you know, starting up front, I thought Raul and Nico's energy to defend and press higher up the field. You know, Albert and Nuhu is a good partnership for me. Alex and Jordan's a good partnership for me. Kids in the middle, back line did their job. I mean, overall, we, we got a little better. So that was critical for us as coaches to see if we couldn't repeat the performance and improve. Josh gave a lot of credit to the coaches in terms of just drilling in what to expect from the Austin Press. And, you know, watching it a second time, it did look like they played through it uh, about as textbooky as you could really draw it up. Uh, is that, I don't know, was, was it particularly encouraging to see them take what you guys talked about in the yeah. training? Credit Freddie Juarez. Freddie did a good job with the. Uh, planning of training and doing some stuff out here tactically the kids are kids are in tune they want to learn they're not crusty old veterans yet I mean credit Freddie and credit Josh and Danny we've talked about transition in the past this game it was so quick it was so clear uh, is that something that uh, just kind of came up with the, with this game Did that get better like what, what was it about transition that was different in this one well the rule of th the way we look at the game, the way I look at the game is that, you know, when you press and you finally win the ball back, as you defend, you actually should have vision to know where Raul is, where Nico is, where Jordan is on the field. So as you defend and the ball, you win possession of the ball, your first pass is forward. And so we've amplified that, we've reamplified some of the things that we've done well earlier in the year showed them you know 10 days ago some of the moments from early on in the year with you know the Lyon game and and Pumas and NYCFC some of those moments where we'd win possession of the ball and we'd be really good in transition and again I've told you this not transition doesn't mean just Jordan Morris running 60 yards I'm talking about pressing higher up the field and then before your opponent gets organized you can find the one pass that may unlock the team and, and get you going. It's very easy to look at these last two games and just say, wow, Albert should have always been up high, but he was so instrumental and important where he was before. How do you handle that? I guess it's a good thing, but you know, what's your thought on that per se? Well, Albert's a smart soccer player. That's what I'd say. He can play here, he can play here, he can play here, he can play here. So anywhere on the field he's gonna find some way to be impactful so you know it's just again I'd caution everybody it's two games we have some tough games coming up sometimes teams get in a groove I mean we're in a we're in a good groove when he was playing back a line I mean we won a pretty big tournament with him back a line so you know we'll see well, uh, Vancouver has a pretty big game. I mean, their season is effectively on the line uh, tomorrow when they yeah. lose the Galaxy. What are you going to be looking for in that game? And, and a Galaxy play? loss. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see what the tactics, you know, he changed a back line of four in Colorado. He's never, he's very rarely does he play with, you know, back line of four, he likes three center backs, likes three, four, three, you know, or some version of three, four, two, one, you know, whatever you want to call it. But, um, so we'll see. We'll see what he puts out there. We're obviously going to watch it. It obviously gives us a little bit of an edge from a fitness standpoint. But it's going to be a tricky game. Can't look past it. Full focus, full tactics for Josh and Danny for Vancouver. Uh, it's an interesting uh, 
you know, the, the Cascadia Cup is no longer on the line in this one, but uh, it's about as important of a match as you've had against the, the Whitecaps in a long time in terms of uh, the larger picture. Um, does it change how you prepare from a no. rivalry perspective? No. The rivalry games are always good. They add a little bit of juice. Certainly Portland might be a little bit bigger. Certainly when we won Cascadia Cup, was it last year up there? You know, that was good. You know, spice the game up a little bit. But look, Whitecaps are a proud franchise. They've been around a long time. You know, they'll always be competitive. So it's a rivalry. Uh, it seemed like um, players are uh, getting healthier, just getting just in a better moment. Do you feel like the momentum, not as a group, but individually of certain players is kicking off at the right time? Yeah. Well, we talked about Raul coming back fully from his injuries. You know, Nico's in a good run of form. Freddie Montero's in a good run of form. You know, getting everybody back healthy is good. And look, I know that it's one game at a time. I understand that. But when, when you hear that uh, certain players are getting called up for friendlies when your schedule is as tight as it is, how do you handle that? Like we do anything else, next man up. Next man's got to step up. Yeah, that's why it's a team sport. We've been in plenty of circumstances, plenty of situations where players on this group of 30 have stepped up and performed well. That'll just have to be the case. Who's that Christian out here? How's he doing? Good, running around on the field, so that's good. But he's on a strict fitness plan, so still it's still going to be a while. Is you had mentioned that, or I think you had mentioned that you were hoping to have him back for Sporting Kansas City. Is it yeah. uh, a situation where you will likely be able to ease him in? Uh, we'll or see. It... We'll see. Let's get past Vancouver. Let's get past Cincy. Let's. Let's just get through those two games. Just moving it along the other side, the uh, same stadium, but I just wanted to get your take on, you know, the Seahawks win. I mean, you, you know, you're a Seattle guy, you, you love yeah. it. I just wanted to get your take on, you know, beating Russell, everything that happened yesterday. I, sure. I watched the game. I mean, look, Russell Wilson did a lot of good things for this club and this franchise, for the Seahawks, okay? And he's a tremendous quarterback. But I, as a Seattle fan, you know, enjoyed the fact that the Broncos lost the game. I thought it was great. It was an exciting game. I was happy for our team, happy for Pete, happy for the fans. Fans gave it to Russ a little bit. I probably would have booed a little bit if I was in the stadium, you know. Just being competitive though, you know. Russ gets it. If in alternative universe, Brandt Smetzer has the headset, do you go for the field goal or do you let Russell Wilson try I would have let Russell for sure take that. That's why they paid all that money for him. <laughs>